of uh, Justice Anton Morima from uh, the courts yesterday uh, indicates that first, IBC cannot summon anybody to their committees, but secondly, uh, that uh, some of those provisions in the Elections Act are actually unconstitutional uh, because of giving powers to IBC that the Constitution uh, uh, totally denied them, but also saying that for you to be held accountable if you are an aspirant or a political party or a candidate or whatever you are, you have to first um, subscribe to the Code of Conduct. And it appears so far, Dr. Chris O'Malo, nobody has signed that Code of Conduct yes. because, of course, the nominations are not yet done. So it, it then means, I mean, politicians would appear to be free to do whatever they want, knowing that even if IBC is watching, there's nothing they can do. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you, Sam. It is true in terms of the timing. You ca it can only be applied to you when you've signed. Mm -hmm. And as the, it stands right now, We've not yet presented our papers to the IBC. We are still going through the party primaries. But even the parties themselves, they have actually borrowed the IBC code of conduct. As we go through the, when we are presenting our, our rules and uh, nominations to the IBC. But having said that, uh, uh, Sam, it is opening a Pandora's box, this ruling of, uh, of Anthony, Justice Anthony Murima. You know, IBC is responsible for free and fair credible elections. It is true for purposes of checks and balances. The way Honorable Kuria said, you can't be investigator, prosecutor, what have you, in terms of the principle of checks and balances. So it comes back to the members of parliament. It actually requires a lot of the delicate balance, particularly where the ruling that sections of the Elections Act are unconstitutional. Maybe, I'm hoping we're still debating the Elections Act because I was away. We need to go into and look into that aspect. Mm -hmm. So truly, whatever the court has ruled, it is our responsibility. Once the court has declared a certain section to be unconstitutional, it is our responsibility to go and amend that accordingly. If at all, the, the IBC is not going to challenge it okay. in, the court, in the court of appeal. Mm -hmm. But uh, I see IBC, they have a lot of work to do. And I call upon my colleagues uh, who are politicians. The way we are uttering some words, you know, it can lead to some chaos. Really, we, we, we must refrain ourselves. Because when you look at the issues, if at all it's true, to this idea kuiba, I don't know whether he said kuiba or kuimba. Because I was, I was in that forum, and we come from different tribal backgrounds, where uh, kuiba in some community can as well mean kuimba. So to me, IBC was in order <laughs> to ask Honorable to someone, <coughs> Honorable uh, uh, Moses Kuria, for purposes of clarity, what did you imply? Did you say kuiba ama kuimba? You know, well, those summons are not meant for clarifying anything. Uh, in fact, uh, <laughs> Chairman Chebukati last week said that uh, the matter would proceed to full hearing. That, that, that is not just for clarity, but, but of course that now may not happen after the uh, judgment of the High Court. Uh,